what you think. What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about former Penn State star Tony Carr and why he failed to make it in the NBA. If you love college basketball, make sure to subscribe to the channel and if you love these type of videos, be sure to check out my playlist in the description below. Now let's get started with today's video. Tony Carr grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and basketball was ingrained in his young mind from a very young age. His father played basketball, and he vividly remembers watching him on Sundays, but his father wasn't one of the two most important people to him. His grandfather and grandmother were the two most influential people in his life, and he says he wouldn't be the person he is today without him. He spent thousands of hours eating, playing cards, talking and shooting hoops with them, learning every life lesson he could ever need to learn at the time. Tony was a gifted basketball player too, but most importantly, he wasn't raised a quitter. Everyone around him constantly held him in check and kept him motivated. His family knew the potential he possessed and noticed he wasn't shooting the ball enough in his games, so his brother made him an offer. For every jump shot he took, he would get $5. Tony says he never got rich off his brother's money, but it helped him become a more confident player. Flash forward a few years, and Tony had been dominating on the AAU circuit with his best friends Mike Watkins and Nazir Bostick, but he never brought back any trophies. Tony cared so much about other people that he always gave them away, even to people who talked trash to him. Clearly, Tony was a great person, which is why it's horrible that when he was a teen, two of his elders passed away. Carr once again joined his friends Nazir Bostick and Mike Watkins at Roman Catholic High School, and they dominated while they were there. After winning back-to-back -back state titles, he was considered the best point guard in Philadelphia, but also he was becoming one of the best point guards in America. Tony, Mike, and Nazir were considered a package deal, which is why it was no surprise when all three of them committed to play for Penn State. Overall, according to 24-7 Sports, Tony Carr was a four-star recruit, the number 8 point guard, and the number 51 overall player in the class of 2016. Joining Carr at Penn State was Lamar Stevens, Chef Gardner, and Josh Reeves. The Lions were going into their sixth season under head coach Pat Chambers, and they hadn't made the tournament since 2011. With the incoming trio, expectations were rising in State College, but they still weren't expected to make the tournament. Carr made his impact clear early as he dropped two 20-plus point games in his first four games there. A few weeks later, both Carr and Penn State struggled as they only scored 10 points in three games, and Penn State was 7-5. Besides three surprising wins over Maryland, Minnesota, and Michigan State, Penn State's season went according to plan as they finished with a 6-12 record in conference play. They would win their first game in the Big Ten tournament, but get blown out in their second game against Michigan State, and they finished with a 15-18 overall record for the season. On the year, Carr started every single game and averaged 13.2 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 4.2 assists while shooting 37% from the field. He scored in double figures in 27 of his 33 games, and expectations were on the rise for 2018. For 2018, Penn State brought in four guys, but only two of them were in any sort of recruiting base. They brought back a lot of talent, and add in the fact that the Big Ten was very weak, they were a trendy pick to make the 2018 NCAA tournament. Carr dropped 33 points and set the tone for the rest of the season. Despite losses to Texas A&M, Wisconsin, NC State, and Ryder, they still had an 8-4 record and were in the hunt for a tournament bid. They lost four of their first six Big Ten games, but Carr was balling out as he scored three 30-plus point games and never failed to score in double figures. It looked like the season was spiraling out of control, but they had a chance to change that against Ohio State. The game was close the whole way, but Ohio State scored a late bucket to tie the game. With just a few ticks remaining, they gave the ball to Carr and he hit a deep three at the buzzer to win the game. From there, they won five of their next six games, including another win against Ohio State. They are now a bubble team, and they had a few opportunities left to punch their ticket to the dance. Unfortunately for them, they lost to Purdue and Michigan State before blowing a game to fellow Big Ten bubble team Nebraska. They were 19-12 and 12 going into the Big Ten tournament, and they need a big run to have any sort of chance. After winning against Northwestern, they beat Ohio State for the third time, and they were back in the discussion. They went on to lose to Purdue, and the tournament was officially out of reach. They would go on to become the number 4 seed in the NIT, where they would beat Temple, Notre Dame, Marquette, Mississippi State, and Utah en route to an NIT championship and a 26-13 overall record. This definitely makes the case that they should have been an NCAA tournament team. On the year, Carl led the team in scoring in 20 of their games and averaged 19.6 points, 4.9 rebounds, and 5 assists while shooting 41% from the field and saving head coach Pat Chambers' job. After the season, he was named to the All-Big Ten first team and decided to test the NBA draft waters. 
He elected to declare, but to everyone's surprise, he signed with an agent. As a player, Carr could score from anywhere on the court, was a good playmaker, and had a good size for a point guard, but he was one of the worst athletes in this draft class and a mediocre defender. Couple that with a horrendous draft combine performance, and this made his stock go from a late first round pick to potentially going undrafted. Ultimately, he was drafted with the 51st pick in the second round by the New Orleans Pelicans. After an OK summer league, he was not retained by the Pelicans and decided to go overseas. He signed with the Italian club Auxilium Torino before switching to another Italian club I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Currently, he is playing for Parma Basket, a Russian club in the VTB United League. Sadly, Tony Carr was never going to be an NBA star, no matter what he did. He did put up the numbers and even had the skills to be drafted to the NBA, but his downfall was something he couldn't control, genetics. He was always one of the slower players on the court and is ultimately why no team gave him a legitimate chance. It is sad to see this happen because Carr is one of my favorite college basketball players ever, but he likely won't ever get a chance to play on an NBA court. Since he left college early, he will likely have to spend the next few years of his life jumping around the foreign league to provide for himself and hopefully he will go back to finish school. Overall, we know Tony is a really good person, and I believe he will be successful in whatever he decides to do. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button and check out all my videos on both the screen and in the description below. I'll see you guys again soon.